My name is Ed Akira, and I'm the producer of a short film documentary, a film called Blacks Can Swim. The aim of the film is to understand why a disproportionate amount of black people and ethnic minorities can't and don't swim. A recent documentary by Siren Jones for the BBC stated that one of the main reasons, or one of the major reasons why black females don't swim is their hair. In the article, it states that swimming can actually be more damaging to Afro hair than non-Afro hair because of a substance used in the swimming pools called sodium hypochlorite, more commonly known as bleach. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with someone who may have a solution to this. Juwan Blake from Swimscarf. Welcome to In the Deep End with Ed Akira. Hello, Ed. Thank you for inviting me onto your show. This is awesome. It's, it's a pleasure. <laughs> so, I'm not even going to bother asking you whether you can swim or not, because I know you can. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can swim. Well, recently, the last six years, I kind of got back into swimming. Um, so, yeah, I, I swim. Um, not very good at tread, trading water, but um, I manage... <laughs> so if, if if so if you are in trouble you'll be able to get yourself out of it which is the um, main thing i can float so yeah. if i am in trouble I, what i'll do is turn over and, and float on my back that to me is very easy um i could do about 20 lengths up and down the pool but when i get to the, the deep end i hold on for dear life so to me, to me, what, all, all you've said, what you've said right now, you're a professional to me. You're a pro. Um, <laughs> I aspire to be. I aspire to be able to do that one day. Um, yeah, I've only just mastered the the breathing breathing technique, and it's like if it's a, a, to me, it's a serious breakthrough because I was having a lot of problems. I, I could I can do my stuff underwater. I can do a length underwater. Well, as long as I can hold my breath. But as soon as I come up for for air, and it all goes. To port, but now I've managed, I've, I've mastered that. So it's a, it's a rhythm. You yeah. got to get to, you got to get the rhythm right. Yeah. Once you've got that and the head movements, then you're you're then, on your way. Then it's all good. But I think a lot of people they don't understand the rhythm of the stroke and the breathing. Yeah, 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 that's what it is. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very, very true. Because once I, once I understood it and I understood the cycle and everything, it, it just came naturally, which is, which is great. So, but this, it's not about me. This is all about you. So, <laughs> hair. Let's talk about hair. There's been a lot of talk. The hair is the main, as we said, the main reason why a lot of black females tend not to swim. What's your take on that? Um, it's true because um, I wouldn't have bothered about swimming if it wasn't for a health condition that I was diagnosed with. So going back into the pool after years of not swimming made me realise that, yeah, I haven't got time for this. I doing my hair every time I, I swam was, you know, was a, a task in itself because I have to wash, blow dry and my hair straightened so the tongs came out and all that sort of thing and plus Afro-Caribbean women we spend a lot of money on hair products on our hair and it's like in the hundreds it's not cheap so of course we want to avoid chlorine it dries the hair out it breaks the hair so definitely that's a, a, a big issue in the Afro-Caribbean community that's one of the reasons <clears throat> why I came up with my product. I got back into swimming. I put everything on my head, two hats, three hats, tied it up with a, a tie, and I thought, no, this is not going to work. Let me try and design my own cap. So that's what I did. As you know, I'm, I mention swim scarf on almost every interview that I do. <laughs> because from what I understand, from what I can see, if it's going to let people swim, then it's a great, to me, in my eyes, that's a great product. So we need to let people know about it. Yeah, um, it's, it's, that's my, my mission. Um, we're still developing. We're still tweaking the product. Um, it's my mission to get more women swimming because uh, on my journey, I've, I've spoken to a lot of women, young and old, trying to get them to 
understand why they should swim for health reasons. Because for me, um, I was diagnosed with high blood pressure. I didn't, I didn't want to take any medication. So I started to, to swim to control my condition. And four years later, no medication, my blood pressure is fine. Wow. So that, you know, don't go down the route of medication. Try an uh, exercise and a low impact exercise as uh, swimming is, it's, you know. Well, that's natural, isn't it? It's the natural way. And the natural way is yeah, always the no best. So, family and swimming, friends and swimming, how many, do most of your friends and family swim? Um, swimming has never been an issue in my family, from what I can remember. My brothers, they were really good. They will jump off the diving board and, you know, no problem. While, while us women, we kind of paddled up the shallow end. <laughs> I think our concern was getting our hair wet. We didn't want to get our hair wet because going home and the dreaded hot comb, that was a no-no for me anyway. Um, back then as a child, my hair was uh, natural, afro. My mum had to comb my hair out and it was painful, you know, sitting there as a child, holding my ears down to get the hot comb in there. And I was like, no, I don't want to do this. So I, I Whenever I had swimming lessons, I would hide from the swim coach, <laughs> hide from the teacher. I didn't want to do it, you know. But um, friends, friends, they can swim. Most of my friends can swim. My family can swim. My mum can swim. I'm not sure about my dad. I've never seen him near a pool. But yeah, um, we're from the Caribbean, uh, Jamaica. My parents are from. They were surrounded by water. That's I have an older brother in Jamaica, and they live in St. Thomas. He's a fisherman. He swims. He taught his kids to swim by throwing them in the, the, the sea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they all can swim. So, yeah, it's not a problem. Um, another thing that keeps on coming up is costs. Um, cost, of teaching, cost of teaching how to swim, um, cost of lessons, cost of... Um, yeah, so what, what's, um, do, you, do you think that is a genuine reason not to swim? It's not a reason. I think it's priorities with, with our community. I think what's more important to them is a, a nice expensive pair of trainers rather than learning a skill, a life skill. <laughs> That's what I think anyway. So we swimming, have... for me, I pay about £4.30 to swim, so it, it, it's pretty costly. I go in there, I, ha I have a coach sometimes, and they keep me at the butt, you're doing it wrong, I'm like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it is a bit costly, but I think within the school, they need to encourage the children more, especially Afro-Caribbean children, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, which which goes on, which which goes into my next question: um, the media, the government, the education board. Do you think they have a part to play in trying to help eradicate this issue? I I spoke to a friend of mine whose daughter um, is a head mistress at the school. So I asked her. I said the curriculum states that a child before they leave school they have to be able to swim 20, 25 meters and get themselves out of a difficult situation and should be able to do, do a few strokes, I think, I think breast strokes or front crawl or something like that, at least a couple of strokes. But they say only 75% of children can do this when they, when they leave school. And when you go down to the deprived areas, it goes down to 42%. And so they advise parents that before your child even starts school, make sure that your child has had some lessons. Don't expect the school to be the one teaching your children how to swim. And they say majority of those that come to school not knowing how to swim are blacks and ethnic minorities. So um, going back to the original question, I think the education board probably has, and the media, has some part to play, don't you think? I, I think so. I think they need to encourage the parents to be more active 
with their children. Yeah. Um, it comes down to prior priorities with Afro Caribbean parents. I mean, they're busy working to feed the kids rather than leisure. They're not thinking about leisure. They're thinking about getting the food on the table. I've been living an example. <laughs> so like I say, my brothers, they, they swam like fish. They were really good. And I held back because of my hair. I didn't want to get my hair mm-hmm. wet. <laughs> About things, things are changing yeah. with me and my children I took them swimming at a young age my daughter swims like a fish um, she had big hair as well I had to fight to get a cap on her head my son he has cerebral palsy he can't swim but he loves the water you can't pull him away from it take him swim he absolutely loves it so it, I think it does come from the parents how, how, you know, the parents' attitude towards water does yep. brush off on the kids. So, yeah, so we, we've, we've got a lot of people to um, <laughs> educate, There's a lot of people to okay. encourage. So maybe the government can uh, do some kind of campaign. Because remember, I don't know if you remember, I'm showing my age now, back in the day, they had an, an advert, learn to swim, young man. Yep, yep, the, yep. Yeah, do you yep, remember that advert? Yep. It was quite a funny advert. Yeah. The, the dude with the muscle and the, the pretty hair, his girlfriend wanted to go swimming, and he was like, no, 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 I'm not going to go swim. I don't, I don't want to go in the water. So she called her other friend, Mike, <laughs> the geek, and um, she went off swimming with Mike, and poor Dave was stood there and wanting to learn how to swim. So yeah, I think campaigns like that, make it funny, involve adults, children, definitely something like that is needed again to encourage parents, to encourage children to get back in the pool. Yeah, definitely. And and I I have these conversations all the time with um, Alice Deering, the only black swimmer in Team GB. But and by the way, she she speaks very highly of you all the time. I met her through um, Instagram. Um, sent her sent her a cat. I said, "Have a go at that. Tell me what you think." Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, she she was happy with it. So yeah. I did my happy dance. Yeah. So and and I think we need more people like that. We need a lot more role models. That's the reason why I'm doing this podcast because to get more people here, influential people, people like yourselves, talk about it, and that will make them do it as well. I mean, with, um, Alice is our role model, and you know, she's, going, she's going places. She's going to be a lot bigger with what she's doing. Most of the swimmers that I know of, they're foreign, they're abroad, they're America, Jamaica, um, you know, Simone. We've got Jamal Hill, yeah, number one power Paralympic swimmer. So, yeah, we do need more in this country. I think the weather also puts people off because it's kind of chilly. <laughs> yes, People definitely. Might, they'll come out of the pool and say, oh, it's cold, I don't want to swim, it's too cold. <laughs> they complain about the weather. I mean, I always say to people, when you go on holiday, what do you do? And they're like, sit by the pool. Why do you want to sit by the pool when you've got a lovely pool in front of you and you've got the sea? Why Why do you want to do that? You want to enjoy life. And having that skill to swim, that, that will give you that. You'll, you'll be on a different level. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had a different job. I didn't sit by the pool. I used to sit by the beach and look after the towels and the bags whilst everybody else was swimming. That was my job. Yeah. Um, yeah. But not anymore. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it, you know, it's good that you're, you've taken it up and you're, you can swim with, with your daughter and enjoy the, the, the whole experience together. So that's, that's another thing that I'll be doing next year. We're looking at doing more sizes. So we'll be doing children's sizes couple of more adult sizes because at the moment I've only got one size in my swim scarf product it's all going to happen next year good Quite good looking forward to that so so all the sisters out there who complain about their hair getting wet and all the chlorine and all the bleach and everything no more excuses this is the solution swim scarf okay. so yeah yeah good good so so what you been up to what else have you been up to um, like I said, I've, um, I've been working with a design company and we're looking at tweaking the swim scarf products and also testing material. So we, we want it more robust. The, the idea is for 
hair with volume and length and also to keep the hair dry so a few tweaks more sizes and we'll we'll have all that ready for next year great good and that's um, not only focused on Afro-Caribbean women we're looking at the Muslim community as well because they wear you know headscarf they cover their head yep um, definitely so it, you know the opportunity is huge for next year and I'm really looking forward to it good so yeah, next next year is going to be next. There's a lot of things happening next year. We've got the, we've got the um, Tokyo 2020 as well. So um, there's going to be a lot of focus on swimming. We got to um, yeah, we still have a lot of work. To do, yeah, definitely. I was speaking with Sarah Jones. Um, I interviewed her, and I said to her that is it because I'm working on this campaign that I suddenly see a lot of um, articles in the media about swimming. Or is there generally a lot more focus on swimming? And she said, yeah, there is more. People, a, lot, a lot more people are talking about it. Um, we are the media. So we're not relying on the big corporations to do so. We are doing it ourselves. Keep on talking about it. We have, thanks to technology, we have the platform now. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for taking the time to come and have a conversation with me and the community at large and um, let's just go on and let's just make let's just make this happen thank you very much thank you for having me on